Saludos. It's your host, Gabe Morales, returning for another episode in our series on Mexican drug cartels. Today, we're going to cover the Tijuana Cartel, also known as the Ariano Felix Organization, or AFO. First off, let me say that I learned a lot about this group from Steve Duncan, who is a retired California Department of Justice special agent who worked in that agency for over 20 years. He worked the AFO in many cases while he was with the DOJ and personally dealt with some of these individuals while they're mocosos even before that while he worked as a probation officer. Steve also was chosen by me in 2002 to be our official San Diego representative for the International Latino Gang Investigators Association. And I recall he put on several great trainings for us in San Diego. I also learned a lot about the AFO from guys like David Contreras, who was featured on this channel, talking about his life and professional career in the greater San Diego area. He interviewed several drug cartel operators on both sides of the border and gave us some good information and advice for a new college book that Tennessee Gang Investigators President Corey Cooper and myself wrote that should be coming out sometime this year. In addition, I have personally interviewed drug cartel associates and traffickers from the San Diego area, and some of the information from those interviews and this video are included in my book, How We Lost the Drug War and How We Can Win It Back. I visited Tijuana many times, especially in the 1980s and early 90s when I was in the Marine Corps and then lived in California. I recall Revolution Avenue in Tijuana in the Zona Central that was not far from the border as being the scene of many bars, shops, and restaurants. I visited Tijuana at least a dozen times or more during that time period, although I don't think I'd go there today, given all the violence where no Americano, or even Mexicanos for that matter, are safe. The lower right-hand picture was taken by me when I was with my family crossing the border back into the United States, and whenever we returned, the lines were always long, as people were checked by the U.S. Border Patrol and customs officials, often with drug-sniffing dogs, checking every vehicle very carefully. But when we entered Mexico, Mexican officials always waved us right through. I can see how easy it would be to smuggle guns into that country. While the Mexican border area can be pretty shady with old buildings, tiny shacks made of spare plywood or even cardboard, and garbage strewn around in many places, and the foul odor of open sewers, Many people may be surprised, but Tijuana also has some very nice areas, like Agua Caliente that has been visited for decades by upper-class Mexicans as well as Americanos. My wife's grandfather took us there once to a very nice restaurant. He loved Mexico, the place of his birth, and I recall him showing us all around as we toured areas, and I remember recalling, I wonder if drug cartel families lived in some of those neighborhoods. In the past, this area has drawn Hollywood celebrities like Charlie Chaplin, Rita Hayworth, and even Laurel and Hardy, who traveled there to get away from the hustle and bustle of L.A. and relax. The Ariano Felix organization is a very large extended family that controlled the Tijuana-San Diego corridor for many decades, although that has changed in recent years, and we'll talk a little bit about that. As I said, the AFO is active in Peru and in Colombia where they formed an alliance with the Cali Cartel and the Norte del Valle Cartel. The Ariano brothers, mainly Benjamin and Ramon, soon began recruiting Sureño gang members from San Diego, and several of these individuals had direct ties to the Mexican Mafia of California. These individuals worked for them as enforcers and drug runners, and they were particularly influential when the AFO went to war with Chapo Guzman and the Sinaloa Cartel in 1992, a gunman named David Papai Boron Corona was hired as their chief of security after he helped save them when they were the subject of assassination by Chapo's sicarios at Christine's Disco Nightclub that was located out of their territory. David Papai Boron Corona was hired by the Tijuana cartel to silence Zeta media writer Jesus Blanconelas in Tijuana. They actually tried to carry out the hit as seen here, but Papai was killed by a ricochet bullet by some of his own henchmen. Blanco Nelas had wrote a very scathing article about the Ariano Felix brothers previously and their involvement in violence at a local courthouse. That involved Popeye and another Mexican Mafia hitman named Jose Bat Marquez. In 2001, Humberto Rodriguez Banuelas, a.k.a. La Rana, was one of the main hitmen for the Ariano Felix brothers. La Rana then fled Sinaloa, and nothing was heard of him for a while 
until he was mentioned as possibly being the leader of a group of armed men who participated in the May 24th, 1993 murder of a Catholic Archbishop of Guadalajara named Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo, who was killed under orders of Ramon Ariano Felix. Six other people were killed in that incident in Guadalajara. Two of the shooters named and blamed for the massacre were Juan Francisco Murillo Diaz, a.k.a. Aguero Jairo, and Edgar Nicolas Villegas, a.k.a. El Negro. Other sources, like retired Los Angeles Sheriff's Department Sergeant Richard Valdemar, say it was actually Papai Boron of La M and 20 of his San Diego gang assassins who did the dirty deed. Regardless of who did it, it is widely believed that the Sicarios mistook the Cardinal's entourage for that of AFO rival Chapo Guzman from Sinaloa. Posadas Ocampo was being driven in a luxury Grand Marquis vehicle that many drug lords preferred to travel in. Others state that it actually was the Mexican government that did it, and this was not a case of mistaken identity, but that they wanted to silence the Archbishop for his public and harsh criticism of, of then-Mexican President Carlos Salinas de Guattari and his brother Raul, who was said to be heavily involved with narcos and other powerful politicians in the Partido Revolucionario Institucional, or PRI. Many law enforcement experts saw Benjamin as the brains and Ramon as the enforcer for the organization. Both were very much hands-on with AFO operations. Benjamin first appeared on law enforcement radar in 1982 when he's busted in Downey, California, for smuggling 100 kilos of cocaine. Somehow, and I'm not exactly sure of the details, but he escaped custody and a federal warrant was put out for his recapture in May 1989 with a $2 million reward. Meanwhile, his brother Ramon was said to be the mastermind behind a massacre of 12 members of a family at a rancho located right outside of Ensenada, Baja, California, in 1998. Apparently, Ramon felt they had disrespected the AFO, and he was known to be very brutal with other enemies of the family cartel. An arrest warrant was put out for him in 1993. And he was added to the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list in 1997, also with a $2 million reward. Eventually, Ramon was killed by a Mexican police officer in Mazatlan in February 2002, after he was stopped for a traffic infraction. It is believed the police officer was actively tracking Ramon for Chapo's Sinaloa cartel in order to hunt him down and kill him. This was a very interesting case, as Ramon was disguised also as a government official and carried fake Mexican police identification. According to reports, Ramon drew his pistol on the traffic cop and shot him. Meanwhile, the officer returned fire and shot Ramon as both fell dead. At least, that's the official story. Some, including Jesus El Rey Zumbada Garcia, who was the younger brother of Cartel de Sinaloa Kingpin El Mayo, did verify that Chapo and his brother got the upper hand and killed Ramon before he could come after them. According to El Rey, Chapo provided the logistics to Mexican police officer Angel Antonio Arias Torres, who tracked down Ramon and was able to get off a final kill shot before he himself lay dead. Now, I know some said that the shooting victim didn't even look like Ramon. Well, these guys are known to have plastic surgery, and a careful forensics comparison of the faces did match, as seen here. In the autopsy verified, it definitely was Ramon. Benjamin was arrested just a few weeks later after Ramon's death by Mexican authorities, probably also tipped off by Chapo and Mayo. And he was extradited to the U.S. in 2011. With the downfall of Ramon and Benjamin, the Tijuana cartel lost a lot of its power. Another brother, Francisco Javier El Tergrillo, was said to oversee AFO finances. And in 1997, an arrest warrant was put out for him. He was arrested in 2006 by U.S. authorities, by the U.S. Coast Guard, while on a boat in international waters, approximately 16 miles off the Mexican U.S. coast. The operation was said to be a DEA setup, as they followed Francisco Javier on a boat that he was buying. Authorities put a tracking device on it, and he was caught. Again, I highly suspect Chapo also gave information, as he was known to do so on his rivals. It is believed that Francisco Javier ended up pleading guilty and even testified against his brother Benjamin, who pled guilty in 2012 and was sentenced to 25 years in U.S. federal prison. That is when Benjamin quickly surrounded himself with more Sureños and Mexican Mafia members in federal prison to work as his bodyguards, as seen here. Meanwhile, another brother, Eduardo, was captured by the Mexican army in 2008, and he was extradited to the U.S. in 2012 
when he was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. By then, the cartel had two main factions, one led by Teodoro Eteo Garcia Cimental, who increased violence and kidnappings and had a similar personality as Ramon. The other faction was led by Luis Fernando El Ingeniero Felix Ariano, who was very young and said to be bipolar. Sometimes he could be very quiet and sometimes very vocal. He was the son of Alicia Ariano Felix. El Teo terrorized Tijuana for many years and was finally captured in 2010. Meanwhile, Luis Fernando was captured in 2014. During this time, his uncle and brother of Benjamin and Ramon, Francisco Rafael El Doctor, the doctor, Ariano Felix, was killed by an assassin dressed as a clown in Rosarito, Mexico, located just south of Tijuana. It is believed the gunman was hired by Chapo's Sinaloa cartel. At that time, then, authorities believed that power was shared by the sister of the brothers, Indina La Jefa Ariano Felix de Toledo, and also by Fabian El Piloto Ariano Corona, Benjamin Francisco Serrano, and Javier Benjamin Briseño Ariano, who were all sons of the brothers. By 2016, a new group emerged. This was the Cartel Tijuana Nueva Generación that operated under Crescentio El Chencho Murillo Beltran, and he aligned himself with a cartel with a similar name that was also moving into Tijuana and other parts of Mexico. This was the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación Murillo Beltran, who was said to be part of the old school Ariano Felix organization, even though he was leading the new faction or Nueva Generación. Narco Mantas were displayed in Tijuana, stating that the cleaning continues in Baja, California, on the part of the Mencho, Sincili, Cartel Jalisco, Nueva Generación, and Cartel Tijuana, Nueva Generación. Martin is the godfather of El Mencho and Crescencio Beltran Murillo, alias El Chencho. Together, they start an alliance between the Cartel Jalisco, Nueva Generación, and remnants of the Tijuana Cartel. El Chencho, along with his nephews, took over the marijuana trafficking along the border and were given support by El Mencho and his sicarios to fight against Chapo's Sinaloa cartel. When Ramon was assassinated in Sinaloa and Benjamin was arrested in Puebla, Mexico, El Tigrillo was left in charge of the AFO. Chencho knew that he was young and enjoyed partying at that time, so he used his brother-in-law, El Seis Uno, to do business with El Tigrillo. Yet, El Seis Uno and Tigrillo partied so much that they were captured together on a yacht while fishing for marlin. Chencho received an invitation when he was in Monterrey by Eduardo Ariano Felix, El Doctor, and decided to meet with him, and he got offered to take over La Plaza. And then Eduardo Ariano Felix was arrested in Tijuana after a big shootout with Mexican federales. Fernando Sanchez Ariano, who was the nephew of the Ariano Felix brothers, was known as El Ingeniero, the engineer. But he was really young and did not have the experience to engage in full-blown war with Chapo Sinaloa cartel. And he was not very cautious either. He was arrested while watching a soccer game of Mexico versus Croatia. Chencho knew then at that time that the Ario and Phoenix organization was pretty much done. With his past family ties to Sinaloa prior to the cartel de Sinaloa and AFO friction, and knowing the power and control that Mayo Zambala and Chapo had, in Tijuana at that time, he sent an individual by the name of Don Balas to ask for a truce in order to gain time to reorganize remnants of the AFO and new recruits for an offensive. But Zambada did not forgive him for prior transgressions. So the war was on before the Cartel de Sinaloa. Chencho immediately aligned himself with El Mencho. Before their downfall, the Tijuana Cartel controlled all of Baja, California and was also active and had cells in 15 other states, including parts of Sinaloa and Zacatecas. And after 1997, after the death of Amado Carillo Fuentes and the downfall of the Sonora cartel, they even moved into that state to move dope across the border into Arizona and New Mexico. The bloodshed in Tijuana has been out of control, as seen as this video. The U.S. government is warning Americans about traveling to Tijuana because of escalating gang violence. Thousands of Mexican troops have been deployed to keep the peace. Tijuana's mayor is blaming drug cartels for terrorizing residents by setting fires in the city. 
Officials say they burned at least 15 vehicles and used some of them to block off streets. The violence is leaving tourists wondering where to turn. We couldn't go back home. Literally, people were on the borderline to go back home to the United States, and their cars were getting you know, lit up. Police arrested more than a dozen people. Mexico's president is considering bypassing Congress to keep military personnel in the streets to maintain order. President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, a.k.a. AMLO, has condemned the violence in Tijuana. So today, violence continues in Tijuana between the Tijuana cartel, the cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, and the Sinaloa cartel. I will cover the Sinaloa and cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación groups in video shortly, in detail. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the AFO Tijuana cartel. Please continue leaving any questions as we continue covering organized crime groups in the United States and abroad. Now, this is Gabe Morales signing off for Gangsters, Cops, and Politicians.